<clears throat> good, good. Director, cool. Sound guy, cool. You know, we're big time and out here at the Texas Underground Radio. I am your host, Jay Vaz. <laughs> and before we take you any further, here at the Jay Vaz Show, man. I mean, uh, the Texas Underground Radio. <laughs> I spit nothing but facts. Facts. Uh, earlier this week, we had the Trap Queen in the building. You hey. know what I'm saying? Trap Queen, Trap Sauce. That's all we drink nowadays. It's all fucking drink. Earlier trap in sauce. the week, I thought it was a couple hours, that, like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> well, the episode the episode comes out earlier in the week. Never died. Damn. As I can hear that by the laugh. That was all facts and then lies. <laughs> I said, early in the week, we had the episode. All right? Oh, okay. And okay, this is okay. all we drink now. You know what I'm saying? We, we fucking linked <laughs> up with Trap Sauce. Now. Make sure you follow them at trapsaucemix.com. No, make sure you follow them on all social media pages at Trap Sauce Mix. And I said something on that episode that I was being questioned. And even afterwards, my co-host over here, you know, he thinks he knows everything. He said, you don't even know, you don't even drink horchata. And I was like, so horchata is not a Mexican drink. You might be asking yourself, y'all fucking uncultured <laughs> motherfuckers are probably asking yourself, what the fuck? Horchata is Mexican. It is not. The drink originated in North Africa. And it is estimated that during the 11th century, it began to spread throughout Hispania, now Spain and Portugal. Through the 13th century, records of a horchata-like beverage made near Valencia, where it remains a popular drink today. Next, you're going to say chorizo from Japan. Fucking <laughs> Kong Kong Wong, whatever his name is, says he made taquitos or burritos, whatever the fuck. Hey, but welcome back to the Texas Underground Radar. I am your host, Jay Vax. Make sure you follow me on all social media pages at the Jay Vax Show. Hit the subscribe button if you like what you've seen. You know what I'm saying? Check it out. Uh, joining me today, my co-host as always. Never die. Hey, you can tell, tell uh, Trap Size got us right. <laughs> Trap Size got him right. <laughs> Look at that cup. Show him the cup. Hey. Make sure you follow him on all social media pages at Mr. Never Die. Got his own little cup from Trap Sauce. You know what I'm talking about? She got tired of seeing my old busted up cup. I need to start bringing cups so I can play <laughs> poor little me. So see, maybe my next guest brings me something. You know what I'm saying? Tired of not being brought. I have a lot of shit back here. But look look, look at all this stuff she brought you, J-Man. Shouts out, to, shouts out to the Trap Queen. This shit is good. It was called Berry something. No, that was Berry. Berry I don't know what this is. Fucking Hennessy kicking now. That boy rolled the R's, boy. Berry. Yo, welcome back. Episode number 20. Nine. Nine. That's how we wrote. We're about to hit episode number 30. This two times a week shit is getting us moving. Yeah. Hey, we got a dope episode today, man. Uh, before I get into any more topics, I want to go into something that Never That's going to talk to us about. Uh, last weekend... By the time this drops, it'll be two weekends ago. Uh, there was a show out here in Houston, Texas, with some dope independent artists that are making a buzz right now. They're killing it lyrically and everything else. Uh, Crash Landing, which uh, it, it's, uh, it includes uh, Chop Daddy. You know what I'm saying? Chop the Father. <laughs> Chop Daddy. <laughs> Chop the Father. Uh, AB Raps. Uh, who else is in it? Uh, John Black. No, not no, John, John Black. Black is not in, but he was part of the show. John Black was part of the show. Uh, Chicano Vega was on the show as well. Um, but I'm, I'm not going to talk to Dad. We're going to jump into Never Die. He was there. He can tell you all about the show and talk to us about everything that happened that night, man. How you feel about that show? Man, I, I can't lie, man. It was dope as hell. It was Saturday, October 8th. Crash landing headline at White, White Oak Music Hall. Brought to you by No Sleep Productions. Um, I showed up a little bit late because we were shooting the podcast. But when I uh, got there, Adrian Angelo was performing. He was like halfway through his set, which he always Hold does. On. He did not get there late because of the podcast. <laughs> he was late because G Love said she didn't want to go. Halfway there, no, she no, decided no. she wanted to go. No, that's not so what he happened. had to make a U turn and go pick up G Love. That's not what happened. That's the truth. Don't be blaming that shit on my podcast. <laughs> go on. That's not what happened. <laughs> Actually, that was halfway right. <laughs> <laughs> But the podcast, they go a little bit late. So anyways, Adrian Angelo is performing, man. He always be doing his thing. Uh, then I saw John Black for my first time. He did a real dope set. He had DJ Bad Child backing him. Then Chicano Vego, Chicano Vego came on. He can, had a dope can't ass even say set. Chicano, right? Damn shame. Chicano Vega. Chicano, honey. <laughs> he had a dope set. He had Young Elder playing guitar behind him. His son came up, Victorious, Victorioso Nine. He brought up Chop the Father, dope ass set. Chop Daddy. 
And uh, it was it was kind of different what they did. Like they didn't have music playing in between the sets. They take a little break, but it was it was cool. It was like a little intermission between each set. So that was something kind of different. It was it was kind of like a live concert. You know what I'm saying? Like. Because so many local concerts are at clubs and they have a DJ playing and stuff like that. But this kind of felt more like a concert. So they had the schedule. And I ain't going to lie, I got a little bit nervous because I saw Crash Landing was doing an hour performance. So a lot of people will lose you in an hour. Correct. But when they, they started to set, it was packed. That's why I made sure I went to the back of the crowd and took a, a video from back of the crowd so people could see how many people were in there. Everybody was getting crunk. They, they did an amazing performance. Um, it didn't even feel like an hour to me. They did lose some of the crowd throughout it, but you could tell like the real hip hop heads were just into it. Um, uh, they got Corey Ray. She's she's real dope. Uh, dang, I'm not prepared on the whole list of Crash Landing. The show is brought to you by <laughs> Trap Sauce Mix. We're going to give him some time to get his shit together over there. Trap Sauce Mix. Uh, he just walked in front of the camera. He didn't give a fuck. No fucks given. Because this never died. And he doesn't give a fuck. But make sure you follow Trap Sauce at hey, Trap Sauce. Uh, Trap Sauce. See, this is this why we need the editor. Mix on all social media pages. Hold on, real quick. The best Trap Sauce. Keep going, in keep motherfucking going. Motherfucking Houston. All over Texas. They actually ship nationwide. So if you're out there in fucking North Africa eating old horchata, hit them up and they might ship you some. You know what I'm saying? That's not nation. That's worldwide. But you get it. Uh, so yeah. This trap sauce and the trap sauce stands for uh, take risks and P. You know what I'm saying? He said P. Take risks and P. You know what I'm saying? What, what does it stand for? I don't know. Take risk and prosper. Watch the last episode. Take risk and take prosper sauce. <laughs> Ever since I drank this, I, I, I've become more uh, risk taker <laughs> and I've become more of a prosperous human being, man. So it, it opens your mind, it takes you out of this world, just like the. Logo does, man. So shouts out to Trap Sauce. Shouts out to the Trap Queen. We're back to the Sex Underground Radar here with Mr. Never Die. See, you, you see how professional us? this guy is? You know so all the crash landing is King Alex, of course, Chop the Father, Dope Aesthetic, AB Raps, Corey Ray, and Spaceman Apollo. And they did a hell of a show for an hour, man. Uh, I, I can't give them enough props. They had a great crowd. Um, it was a dope night for hip hop, man. And the whole the whole audience was Latinos. It's dope. Wish I would have been there. And um and shout out to my boy Mr. Two Seventy from Stairwear. I was kicking it with him that night. And KP keep he pushing. A lot of love to the show. And Popo. Shout out to him. Yeah. So it, it was live, man. A bunch of a bunch of underground people there. Carlos Slim, he was out there. He performed Latinx hip hop. Yeah. Them damn Mexicans. It was a dope event, man. Shout out to No Sleep Productions. They did their damn thing. Shout out to Crash Landing, headlined it, and, man, I wish I been and like pulled that. it off, man. So, in your opinion, what do you think is that, being that it was completely independent, no sponsors, they were able to pack this place out all independently on their own, and then we have these other um, promoters and event makers, whatever you want to call them, they have a lot of backing. They have a lot of sponsorships. And they're charging these artists on top of that. On top of the sponsorships, they're charging these artists, but we're not able to get... Because we, we've been very critical of this on previous episodes where what's happening that artists, that fans are not showing up to the show. But then you show me the video. I see your video and you tell me how packed it was and how people were there showing love. And it makes me wonder, why are people more willing to go... What, what are these promoters not doing... Right, that our guys over here did. Um, I'll say I don't know everything they did behind the scenes, but from the outside <clears throat> looking in, the level of talent was very good. Um, these are very humble and talented artists that show love. So of course you show love, you get love. Um, it was a, at a good. It was at a good spot. White Oak Music Hall. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's prestigious, but it's it's a good spot in Houston. Like, it's a known spot. Um, and there's not a lot of local shows that are done there that I'm aware of. I, yeah. I've i never... The only other hip-hop act I've seen there or heard about being there is Zero. So, um, I mean, it was well put together. It was promoted well. Yeah, it really was. Yeah. Yeah, you see, everybody was working as a whole... 
promoting it on independent individually on their social media pages. So I'm very happy for them because again, sometimes you worry about these things for independent for when independent artists decide to put their shows together, mm-hmm. it worries you that they're gonna lose money or something because we're so used to going to these competitions or whatever they're called to where the only people in the crowd are other artists or family members of those artists, but as soon as they perform, they leave. And it wasn't a competition. Correct. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, you would think you would get more people at these events because there's so many artists, right? There's like yeah. fucking 50 artists. And sometimes that overdoes it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I get greed kind of takes a toll in a way mm-hmm. because they want to get so many artists all in the lineup, charge them so much because it's going to make them more money. Mm. But as an artist, what are you really getting out of this? Yeah. And these was four based artists which are all very talented they all put on very good shows so yeah i'm happy for them and shouts out to the whole crash landing family shouts out to snow sleep production chicano vega and everybody uh adrian, adrian angelo, angelo. Hey. uh everybody that uh do it again because i was i was the camera Shout wasn't out on to my boy adrian angelo um i don't got a shirt <laughs> I'm, used, I'm used to being the redheaded stepchild. I don't have my own cup. I don't have a shirt. And people are like, Hey, you, I put in the wear, footwork. I put in the footwork. Why you don't wear shirts for look, look man, I'm going to wear whatever the fuck is given to me. Shouts out to my sister out there in uh, Monclova, Coahuila. She gave me Los Acereros jerseys. So hey, wearing. you looking fly in that pink, bro. Like, hey, you know, fucking breast cancer awareness yeah. month. So we out here representing. Already. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't even know what I was saying, but I was talking shit. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, uh, that's something I wanted to talk about, man, and, and you know, we already touched on it. I just wanted to talk about artists performing, paying to perform, and I want to get feedback from the artists watching or listening. Uh, what do you really think you're getting out of this besides practice, right? Because as, as a person that, that's at a lot of these events, I'm going to be at two of them tonight. Um, I, all I see it as is you're getting your practice in on stage, Right, which and is which is important. It's an important. Correct. It's important to show up to shows and kind of see how things are run and and to practice practice performing. Correct. Um, and, and a lot of this is just important for you, independent artists, man. I, I get it. Uh, one of the, another thing I wanted to talk about was um, as an independent artist, I would like to talk to you guys about getting your paperwork, you know, correct. Getting getting things done the right way to where you know Chicano Vega was talking to us about it the other day. How a lot of these artists are not aware that if you sign up to either uh, BMI or um, ASCAP, ASCAP, uh, and you 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 become a uh, one of the guys that's performing at, for example, at the Crash Landing event, mm-hmm. um, you're able to put you know put that into into the system and, and get some royalties from that or whatnot. Yeah, get, I didn't get, even know that until recently. Get paid for that. Correct. Yeah. I just learned that about maybe a year ago. Yeah. Uh, and it's something that a lot of artists don't know. So uh, later on, we want to be able to get somebody that knows more more about that because uh, we would like to educate not just the listener, but obviously we get a lot of artists that tune into the show, uh, whether it's the whole episode or the clips that we put out. But you guys rock with us, and I would like to get you educated on that because I was once an independent artist, and I was telling Never Die how uh, one of my uh, singles or songs got used in an independent film without me knowing, right? Mm-hmm. The person that was featured on that song let them use it, right? Mm-hmm. And the thing is, they used my verse. They didn't even use Dang, his part. Dang, that's crazy. They used my verse, uh-huh. um, but since I didn't have, no, I didn't have, I didn't, it wasn't copyrighted, it wasn't anything, I wasn't under anybody. Um, I found out about it once it was released. There, it's a short film called Hermanos, available on YouTube. It has like over 20 million views, mm-hmm. and I never saw a cent from this. Yeah, and when I said like, man, there's a lot of views, and I'm not seeing any money. The replies was, well, get with your, uh, I guess, my distributor, and tell them to get their paperwork right so you can get paid. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, uh, this this song was from fucking 2009. Like, uh, yeah, even uh, Tim at Drop Shop, he was telling me that he used to have a song, and they played. I can't remember which team, but one of the major league baseball teams that would play it in the stadium when one of the guys would go up to bat and that he'd get publishing from that. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So, so again, that's something we want, we want to talk about more. We'd like to get somebody on here that knows about that so we can try to educate the, the, uh, the viewer, the listener and, and get more into that. Uh, anything else you want to talk about before we jump into these drops of the week? Uh, no, let's get started on the drops. Are you sure you don't want to talk about the cypher? I'll talk about it later. <laughs> I'll just talk about it now. I mean, I have my crash landing stuff down here. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, so let's talk about this week's drops. Uh, Shouts out to my girl, Carolyn Rodriguez. She recently dropped a uh, visual 
Uh, it was shot by Ace the Shooter. Uh, the it's it's two songs in one, and I think they mixed it to where it's a part of the song on the first take. Then they put the other song, and then they put go back to the first song. They mix both of the songs together. It's called Break Pressure, uh, Break and then Slash Pressure. Uh, Break is actually a single from the Song Whisperer album that she released earlier uh, last year. I believe yeah, last year she released that. Um, the break song is fucking dope. I like the delivery. It makes me think of like an old Western country type song, like the way she's singing it. Mm-hmm. That's the vibe that it gives me, and I really like it. Uh, Pressure was also dope, but I, pref- I, I'm more of a fan of the song Break. Uh, again, it's an older song, but the, the video just came out uh, a couple weeks ago. So if you haven't done so, make sure you check that out. It's called uh, Break and Pressure by Carolyn Rodriguez. Uh, what you got for us? Uh, man, I checked out that K Reno and Climax presents Concrete Thoughts. Um, I can't lie. When I first saw it, I was excited about it because, of course, K Reno and then Climax. I've I've heard of him before. Um, he has like a very unorthodox, unorthodox flow. He's very lyrical, so I was excited to hear it. Uh, it started off with Golem, and the last bar K Reno spits. He says, "Don't hate the winners if your game is bad. Blame your dad." <laughs> I was <just> like, <laughs> "That boy K Reno, he be yeah. he be on some shit." Uh, my favorite tracks were "Fed Up," uh, "Last of a Dying Breed." Uh, hypersonic outer space and man it, it was it was dope the one thing when k reno gets on a lot of tracks he just murders everybody else you know what i'm saying but <clears throat> climax really held his own like lyrically and not only that but like mentally like you can tell he thinks on a higher level than most yeah. people so so it was a dope ass project y'all really need to check that out already shouts out to climax and obviously the goat k reno yeah uh switching it up a little bit man uh this is the Texas Underground Radar. So I'm going to talk about a Tejano artist that recently dropped. Her name is Jenny B. Uh, you know, we follow each other on Instagram. And, and Cliff, the guy, was the director of this video. It's called Beso de Amor. I uh, really enjoyed it, man. Uh, I listen to a lot of music. I don't just listen to hip-hop. I listen to everything from fucking country to hip-hop to fucking Spanish music, Spanish rap, whatever. Uh, and I like it because listening to it, it gives me those memories of listening to Tejano music. I, I grew up in the Valley, right? I grew up mm-hmm. in McAllen, Mission. And it gives me those vibes to where when I was a younger kid and I was listening to Tejano, I've been so, in, un, you know, un, disconnected from Tejano music. Mm-hmm. So when I first heard it, I liked it. I saw the visual. The visual is fucking dope. She's talented. She sings her ass off. And again, it was directed by Cliff God. Uh, I tapped in with him earlier this week as well. Shouts out to Cliff God. Yeah, shout out to Cliff um, So, um, yeah, make sure you guys check that out if you, if you like Tejano music. It's Jenny B, Beso de Amor. Already. Uh, shit, Sleepy the Realist out of Dallas. He dropped How to Act, produced by Young Smoke on the track. It's featuring Cap G and Michelini. Um, I was surprised because I thought Michelini was going to be doing the hook, but it was actually Sleepy the Realist, and he did his thing. It's a dope ass track. All three of them went in on their verses. Shout out to the boy Sleepy the Realist. Shout out. Uh, let's see. A Real uh, recently dropped a zinc single called Looking Clean. Uh, very Texas, Texas like. It has that screwed sample hook on there. Um, the, the song all together has got that Texas swag on there. Uh, a real, if you don't know him, it's a younger dude. Uh, when I first met him, I thought this dude was like 20 something, right? And then mm. Filetto tells me, nah, he's 15. So <laughs> young ass dude, he doesn't sound like it though. Yeah. Uh, dope ass delivery. Very, like it says, very Texas like. If you're into this Texas shit, you're going to enjoy it. Uh, excuse me. Uh, uh, he, he's been working, he worked a lot with Filetto on his project. I'm not sure if Filetto was um, the one that produced this. Uh, single in particular but again uh, if you haven't done so make sure you check it out a real looking clean cool visual even better song uh, as a whole so make sure you check that out and uh, I checked out Corey Ray's uh, project she's part of Crash Landing and when I was at the show I Man, I was loving her energy. She did a great performance, so it made me check out her project. And uh, one of my favorite tracks on there was You Don't Love Me featuring Dope Aesthetic. That was real deep. And uh, she had Head Up on there, Levels, Levels Freestyle on the way. It was a very good, solid project. It was her first project. And um, she had a lot of good underground stars on there, like Chop the Father, AB Rap, Spaceman Apollo, Popo. And uh, I can't wait to hear what she got coming up next. Yeah. Because I think she's going to definitely start building up her confidence. And check her out. Yeah. Um, so let me jump into my artist of the week, man. The artist of the week uh, comes in in a time where it needs to be brought. I feel like it's the perfect time to bring light to him. Um, he's from my hometown, Waller, Texas. 
Uh, I, I, I heard of him about a year ago. Uh, my boy Gringo to MC hit me up. He said he was in Waller. I was like, what the fuck you doing out here, bro? He's like, I'm shooting a video. And then he told me about this guy. Uh, his name is Bill Grippen. This dude got a dope-ass fucking delivery, man. He, he about, about a week ago, he dropped this song called Steve Jobs. Sick-ass delivery, dope-ass visual. Uh, I'm not sure who directs his videos. I'm not sure who's backing him. But what I do know is the dude can spit. Got a dope-ass delivery. His visuals are always on point. Shouts out to Candyman. They even shot a video at Candyman's house uh, earlier the, in the year or last year. I can't remember when it was. Uh, but make sure you check out Bill Grip, and That's my artist of the week. And I want to give him a big shout-out because the dude is very talented. Like I said, he can spit. Got a cold-ass delivery. Um, and earlier in the week, he, he made a post on Facebook where he talked about he was starting to lose focus because he was so so into drugs and alcohol, and he decided to take himself out of the game temporarily and put himself into rehab because health is wealth, my friends. So take care of yourself, Bill Grip, and not just Bill, but everybody, anybody else watching. Take care of yourself because if you don't take care of yourself, all this other shit don't matter. Uh, but my artist of the week, Bill Grippin. Make sure you check him out. Well, that's pretty ironic, Jabez, because my me. artist of the week was Gringo the MC. <laughs> what are the chances? <laughs> Shout out my boy Gringo. Yeah, uh, shit, Gringo the MC, he popped up on my radar probably about six years ago. We opened up for Jerem Benton at Warehouse Live. Uh, Smooth Vega did a show, and we opened up for Jerem Benton, and that's also the night I met Two Raw for the first time. Uh, last week, I saw Rap Geeks posted a video with him and Buns. From the song Dropping the Casket from their new album Dropping Soon. I uh, checked that out and then I saw that he did a song with Bo Bundy, uh, El Rodeo, from the Rap, Rap Geeks album. El Rodeo, too. but yeah. Yeah. Rodeo, you Rodeo. <laughs> and then that, sh- that led me to Baby Bash and Paul Wall had him on the song Smoke Bigger Go Home. Yeah. So, I mean, he doing his thing, man. Y'all, ch- y'all check that boy out. Gringo the MC. Yeah. Gring- Gringo been killing it for a while now. Yeah. Uh, definitely. Glad, definitely. Glad he's, fu- yeah, he's finally. He's a dope ass artist. Glad he's finally getting the, the you know the break that he deserves. Uh, October 29th, If you ain't doing nothing, and even if you are, cancel your plans. Pull up yeah. to the One Club, our first ever podcast that's live with an audience. Texas Underground Radar will be live at the One Club out there in twenty four thirty twenty two zero four three four Kirkendall Road out there in Spring, Texas. Candy in my cup. The truth. About the industry. <laughs> I'm reading the ad right here, so I can't see. Brought to you by New Wave Click. Uh, it's going to be our very first live podcast. Uh, so, Misha, come out here, have a drink, join the conversation. Join the conversation, be a part of the crowd. We're going to have artists performing. Uh, can we talk about some of the artists we have already? Yeah. Uh, so, right now, we got my boy Tillo. We got uh, Chop the Father ain't going to make it. Uh, we have uh, Don Vito. Uh, we have who, who who you got on your end? Um, I was talking to Carlos Slim, and and that's a maybe. Yeah. Um, what about Tura? Check into it. Tura, Tura <laughs> might be out there. So so again, you know we don't. We ain't we, even talk to him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we haven't even talked. He don't even know we exist right now. Nah, but uh, so you know we gonna have some artists performers still putting the idea together. Yeah. But it's gonna be a live podcast. We're gonna have performers. Uh, so make sure you pull and everybody up. been hitting me up already about performances. We're not sure how many performances we're gonna have yet. <coughs> we're yeah. gonna get all this schedule done next week. We're gonna have a meeting and talk about all this. So, so make sure you guys pull up October 29th. The Texas Underground Radar live for the first time at the One Club. Uh, what else you got for us? Never die. And the other day, shout out to Urban Goods. They put together a cipher. Um, grand grand prize winner got a thousand dollars. They had Highway Yeller and AD Green and Swisher House as the judges. Uh, they were everybody was rapping on that Push and P track, and it was nothing but spitters in the building. Man, Houston's own MC, Chacha Jazzy, Imani Monroe, Chapo, Tillo, uh, Imani Monroe. If I say your name wrong, I apologize. Shout out, that's my girl. Shout out. Did I said her name right. Huh? Did I say her name right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, G Love, Lopez, Misery, DZ to Dawn, Eric Carlston. Man, it was, it was a dope ass event. Um, shit, them boys have free pizza outside. Ciroc, Ken, them boys not throw a party. So everybody was spitting. Um, it went down to Houston's own MC and Armani Monroe. They were the last two, and uh, and G Lo tripped me out because she was she was studying her verse the whole time. Then she get up to the mic and she said, "Fuck this!" and stuck her phone in the pocket and started freestyle. <laughs> and Ad Green even said, 
You might have won if you just want to spit a little bit more. But um, but Houston's own MC came out with the win, and Armani Monroe came in second place. She got some brand new Jordans. Animes performed a new single, Baller. G Love performed Poppin'. And just thank you to Urban's Good, Urban Goods for putting on a dope ass event, man. Shout out. Getting getting all the people together is real successful. Yeah. Shout out to Lopez, dude, did a motherfucking thing. Uh, shout out to that boy Misery, man. That boy, I loved his flow. Yeah. Yeah. That cool. boy killed it. Shout everybody, out. everybody was dope as fuck, man. There's so much talent in the city right now, and there's just everybody feeding everybody for real. No, no. Huh? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just saying, yeah, Why yeah. you shaking your head over there, Jamie? No, you good. You good. <laughs> hey, shouts out to Land Next Hip Hop. They currently put out a new playlist on Spotify and Apple Music in a collab with the Damn Mexicans. Yeah. Uh, they put out a playlist uh, featuring the hottest, you know, Houston or, or Texas Latin artists. Uh, it's got Mystery on the, on, the, on the cover of the playlist. Um, who else does it have on there? Let's see. Um... The yeah, them, them boys be dropping that once a month, so y'all be sure to tap in with yeah, them. Yeah, main goal, the Iceman, and, and, you know, so so they're always updating the playlist, so make sure you guys check that out. What you got for us? Uh, I guess let's end it with that Texas OG classic album. Uh, this week I went with SPM Reveille Park. I made it wasn't my first. Uh, at first it wasn't my favorite album. It dropped around the time he got locked up, and it sounded like he was freestyling on every track, so... Like, I'm used to him putting time behind his projects. Yeah. You could tell this was done quick. But once I heard the Screwed and Chopped version, I think that's when it really kind of grew on me. And plus, he didn't drop an album for a while because that's when it got locked up. So When Devil Strike was his next album. So that was the only new SPM we got to hear for a while. Um, some of my personal favorite tracks were The Beach House, Red Beans and Rice with Juan Gotti, Dallas to Houston, of course. Get Your Guns with Big Flake, Screwed Up Tape. And man, Rashid and Loji, they wrecked that screwed up tape. Yeah. Uh, it had I Need a Sweet with Powder and Baby Bash, Cool Enough with JC out sweet. of Fort Worth. Man, it was a it was a dope ass album, especially the screwed and chopped version. I think Beltway Eight screwed and chopped it. They did a real good job on it. So that's my Texas OG classic album. Shouts out. That was one of my favorite SPM albums at the end of the day. Yeah. Um the beat selection was dope as fuck. I think Faletto did all the beats on there. Uh, I think SPM did most of them. Did he? Yeah. He shouted out for little, but I think SPM did most of them. Did all the production yeah. on it? Yeah. Okay, okay. I mean, if we ever get for little on it, we can ask him. I mean, I've had for little before. Oh, but then you asking that question. <laughs> so when we get him out here, we can ask him. Ask him the classics. <laughs> like Hustle Town. Oh, nah, but look uh, at the big headed guy. Huh? <laughs> look at the big headed guy. Uh, yeah, no, so make sure you check that out. Uh, the J Vash Show. The J Vash Show, you know what I'm saying? So, um,. This is going to wrap up episode number 29. Uh, once again, on October 29th, make sure you guys pull up on us, man. It's a dope event at the One Club. Uh, first ever live podcast. And if this goes yeah, well for live. us, uh, we would like to continue to do this at other venues and maybe other cities. Uh, it, it, it's something we've talked about. So hopefully, you know, it, it goes the way we plan it to. Um, make sure you follow us on our social media pages at the JVAS Show. Follow me on TikTok. I put a lot of the clips of the interviews on there as well. Uh, join the conversation, man. Drop any comment of anything we might be talking about that intrigues you or anything you might want to know more about or artists that you want to know about. And hopefully we can have them, have them on here at some point. Um, we're still adding people to the list, so give us some time. We'll get to it. Yeah. Uh, once again, shout out to Trap Sauce for stopping by Trap yeah. Sauce Mix on all social media pages. And make sure you follow my co-host over here. Never die. Never die. And I'm Jay Bass, <laughs> and you're watching Sex on the Ground Radar. That was episode number 29. We'll be back next week with more trap sauce hey man, for your shout fucking out to cup. that boy. Shout Let's out to go. that boy, Tillo. <laughs> shout out to the boy, Tillo. I don't know why. Why? Because he's cool with that motherfucker. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, he fucking dope. That nigga can spit. Shout yeah, out yeah. to Tillo. Once again, Jay Bass, Mr. Never Die. Yeah. And you're watching Sex on the Ground Radar. Let's go. This is motherfucking. This is motherfucking. Motherfucker, you don't have a friend. Texas, motherfucker.